Rear Admiral Robert Riley. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. On behalf of the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Gary Ruffhead, who sends his regrets, he couldn't be here today, I want to thank this wonderful organization for their efforts on behalf of all of our military fa fathers and uh, through extension, our military families. We know that all that we can do to support the men and women that wear the cloth of the nation is critically important now more than ever and in the future. I too am a father. I'm the father of three daughters. In fact, I believe that uh, I've earned the t-shirt, I'm dad, I don't understand, get over it. Uh, and in fact, uh, your weekend was very busy, sir, on, on the ball fields uh, in East Texas. Uh, I uh, jumped on a plane uh, to go to Chicago uh, to a very nice event, the wedding of a nephew of mine. And I took my three daughters. Uh, at this time, they are now are ages 22, 18, and 16, respectively. Uh, and it was a black tie affair. So it gave me another opportunity to wear my dress black tie uniform, which I will tell you is very snazzy. I mean, it's got the black coat and it's got a gold cummerbund and we're able to wear our medals. Um, so here I was in a hotel in downtown Chicago after the wedding, uh, wearing my, my uniform, dinner dress. Uh, and of course, many people in the audience didn't, didn't know who I was. I had to tell them that I was in the Navy. And then they asked, well, what do you do in the Navy? And I said, well, I'm an admiral. They say, well, you're really old, aren't you? And I said, yes, I am. Um, but then uh, they saw the various campaign awards and medals and said, well, you know, what's that all about? And I said, well, it's just kind of what you do when you're doing service and you go to faraway places. And then they said, how long have you been in the Navy? And I said, 34 years. And the next question was, what do you think has been your hardest job over the course of that time frame? And it was a very quick answer being a parent, being a father. Uh, I took daughter number one, Katie, up to uh, Union Station early this morning. For those of you who live in this town, you realize that this morning was a little interesting. We had quite a thunderstorm coming in, and of course, we're wondering if we're gonna get to the station on time, and I mentioned to Katie, I said, hey, I have the opportunity to speak on behalf of the Chief of Naval Operations at a wonderful gathering to recognize military fathers, and she said, why did they pick you? And I said, well, uh, because uh, they know I have children and they know that I would probably talk about you all. Um, uh, and uh, she was very reflective of that. Uh, and she said, well, um, good luck, Dad. Just keep us out of the press. Uh, and I can remember going on deployments uh, for at least six months, sometimes being extended, going into areas that uh, were a little bit challenging at the like trying to stay in touch with our families back home. A number of decades ago, that was very difficult. Nowadays, it's gotten a little bit better, but still, it's not the same as being there. And you can send videotapes home on occasion. You can make the long distance calls. You can even get internet access. But one of the things that's made this so meaningful for me over the course of the last 34 years is seeing how the, how the parents, how the fathers, try to keep a little bit of home with them while they're gone and grasp the significance of their role. Now we're all taught that we do this for God, country, our fellow soldiers or our shipmates, and somewhere in there you have to balance the family. But it pretty soon becomes interspersed as one strong mission. You're doing this because it's what you signed up to do, you're doing this because it's important, and in the end you hope you can make a difference in the lives of those people that you leave behind, behind at home, particularly little ones. And I will tell you that the most poignant moment for me, um, regardless of what time it was in my 34-year career, was always that day when we finally came home. Uh, and there was, a, there was a plan, there was an order to things uh, in terms of when the ship finally got alongside the pier, when the lines were put over, when the tugs had gone away, and we had the gangplank or the brow down, the first individuals that left the ship were the fathers whose children had been born while they were out from deployment. And you could sit up there on the main deck and watch sailors see for the first time 
the child that they had never met. Uh, and it was so moving and so poignant. Now, think of what it must be like to have that moment and then do it again and again. And you see how important it is for organizations like this to, uh, to exist. Uh, I'm very proud that for this particular year, you have seen fit probably um, through a process where you looked at a group of a number of incredible military fathers to, in this case, honor a great Navy family. Uh, and in fact, I had a, a chance to meet our honorees here early on. Uh, and I know when you hear more about them or you read more about them, you'll find that they're, they're pretty incredible. And the Navy is really a small family. Uh, I can remember, for example, during Gulf War I having uh, a baby uh, deliver up at Bethesda, uh, and that baby have difficulty, and that baby find itself in the neonatal intensive care clinic, uh, and to be in there for a period of time, and what that meant to me, and certainly what that meant to mom. I can't imagine it being a scenario where it involves triplets. So you can imagine uh, what this family has gone through and how they have pers persevered and how this uh, marvelous chief petty officer has endeavored to do whatever he could do in support of them. Because at the end of the day, there will be a Navy uh, and we all take off the uniform, but it will be these little ones that you watch go, grow up uh, and sooner or later you get the own t-shirt and as was the case last Saturday, you watch, watch one of them walk down the aisle and you remark about how they got to be the individuals they are, good people, and you hearken back on how lucky I was to be married to the person that I'm married to and did I have the right opportunity to do the right things. So let me close by saying thank you again on behalf of Admiral Ruffett, uh, the Chief of Naval Operation in the Navy for the honor you have bestowed on this family, and thank you for everything that you continue to do uh, on behalf of our military fathers and our military families, because it's important to the nation. Thank you.